Hello, it's Wednesday the 14th of November 2012. A warm welcome along. Chris Reardon's United Kingdom Talk. I've actually had to st- <laughs> I've had to start this show four times now. Every time I start it, the first time I forgot to hit the record button on the audio, then the phone rang, then something else happened. Four times I've started this now, so hopefully I'll get through the whole thing. Uh, and that. Um, I wanted to, to share something with you. I have discovered new items to eat in Waitrose. Now, I don't, I've got to admit, I don't usually buy those ready meals, but I was attracted to these two new vegetarian Linda McCartney products she does wonderful wonderful things um with 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 all her vegetarian stuff first of all the linda mccartney lentil and vegetable cottage pie i've already had one of these and they are absolutely delicious right it's got potato on the top and what what we got green lentils mixed sprouts vegetables topped with buttery potato and sweet potato mash it is absolutely delicious and i usually have that with probably a packet of uh, vegetables that i've put in the microwave as well and also this linda mccartney vegetarian sausage hot pot just as nice as the um as the other one and this one says our very own vegetarian sausages gently cooked in a tomato bean lentil and Red wine sauce. All right, okay. Topped with slices of roast potato. Both absolutely delicious. And you'll find those in uh, larger branches of Waitrose here in the UK. And they're not expensive either. I was surprised at the price of those. Uh, They're about £2, less than £2 for one of those, which is uh, damn good value for money, I think, to be honest. I I, I also noticed some of those... um, You know the the, the brand Innocence? They do fruit juices and things like that. Very good brand, actually. They're doing these pots of vegetable-based meals, but they're like three pound over three, nearly four pounds for those, and they're about, I would say, roughly about the same size as these. But four pounds, I think they're way overpriced. I, I don't actually notice anyone buying those. Whether or not they're selling many of them, I don't know. I'm sure, I've no doubt in my mind, they're very, very good quality. That innocent stuff is very good quality. But four pounds, you know, for for a pot of stuff that size, I think is a little bit too too expensive. To be honest, the Linda McCartney ones that I just um, uh, told you about, less than two pounds. I actually think they're a little bit underpriced. I'd be happy to pay sort of £2.50 for one of those. So I don't know if they're they're on a special offer. But do try one of those um, if you're around uh, uh, my favourite supermarket, Waitrose. We've got a nice big one there. Now, I meant to tell you, have you seen the... Oh, lots of emails coming up on the show very, very shortly today because we've fallen behind a little bit with those. I never told you. You know when you went to see... I told you I went to see that James Bond film, Skyfall. Have you seen it yet? What did you think? It was good, wasn't it? I told you, one of the better ones, that one. Um, I meant to tell you two things. I went to the Odeon in Bracknell and we paid, I think it was Ronnie. Did Ronnie pay for me in the end or did I buy? I can't remember anyway. Anyway, so we decided yesterday, Ronnie can't sit in the normal seats. He has to sit in the premier seats. You know, because it's, it's a bit like that. It doesn't bother me where I sit. So you've got to sit in the premier seats. And I have to say, the premier seats were nothing like the premier seats that they have at the Odeon in Greenwich. Absolutely nothing like them at all. And, complete, and to be honest, a bit of a waste of money. I don't know why why he bothered paying. I can't remember how much the upgrade was to go up to the premier seats. But really, in Bracknell, not worth the money at all. Not only that, but as the door opened and we went into the cinema, it stank. It absolutely stank. I don't know what it was. Not only did it stink, it was really hot in there. They must have had the heating up full blast and the entire place really stank. Of course, after a while, you get used to it and you don't notice the smell anyway. So, But not the point. I think that I should have written a letter actually about that. Awful to go in somewhere like that after you spent, you know, £10 each to go and see a film. Because I think that's what we paid in there. Or, or uh, ten pounds to see a film. You don't walk in the door, and this smell just hits you. It was awful, awful. Have you ever been to a smelly cinema like that? I think the cleanest cinema I ever went to was uh, was one in Florida, years and years ago. And I went to see Chicken Run. That was quite funny going to see that. Of course, I'm sitting there with all these Americans, and I'm laughing as this film was, on, and they just didn't get it. I mean, no one left. 
but they weren't howling as I was. You know, they were, I think now and again people looked around to wonder wondered what I was laughing at. They just didn't get it at all. <laughs> What's all that about, eh? Have you ever been to a dirty cinema? Not nice, is it? <clears throat> you know, bits of. I suppose it was the the the, the combined smell of 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 half-eaten hot dogs and 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 and, and, and smell and body odour in it. Stank in that cinema. The odium in Bracknell, even awful. Look, I, do you know what I did to my nephew this week? I've been very naughty because I, I I sent him a little photograph of me with my thumb up, like that. I th think that made him happy. Little thumb up. <laughs> Okie doke then. So uh, not only that, but I after the film, after the excellent film, I got up, grabbed my coat, put my shoes back on because I take my perhaps that's what the smell is in there. People remove their shoes. Do you think? Do pe many people remove their shoes in a cinema? I do. Oh yes. Oh, I like to be nice and comfortable. I remove my... Maybe that's what the smell was, my shoes. And anyway, I put my shoes back on. And I looked down. I, 20 pound in two 10 man notes had only dropped out of my pocket and was sitting there on the floor. Ah, oh, I nearly had a heart attack. Ronnie had to pick me back up off the floor and carry me back outside, dear. It was awful. Imagine that, losing 20 pounds. I wonder how much money those cleaners must find in there. Not that if, if they have cleaners in there, judging by the stench that was in there when we tried to watch the film, I don't think they were in there at all. Or maybe they were so busy looking for my £10 notes on the floor that they didn't have time to do the cleaning. Awful. The email address of this show is chris at uh, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I've done a good uh, couple of parties on Saturday night, the Halloween party, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Now, where was that again? Oh, yeah, that was at uh, my friend's uh, pub, the Steamcoach. We did a Halloween party there, uh, which was just fantastic. Everyone came in costumes. Foolishly, uh, for the first time, I forgot to take my camera. Usually, if it's a fancy dress do, I often take my camera to these events, and you get to... Every, virtually everyone was in fancy dress. I was dressed dressed as a kind of butcher, you know, with blood all over, with pretend blood all over. Well, I think it was pretend blood all over me and, a, and a, a meat cleaver and things like that. So I was dressed as a butcher. People came as witches and ghosts and all that. Fantastic. Now, it's great when you have a fancy dress night and anyone, everyone joins in. I have done fancy dress nights where the staff dress up and no one else bothers. That's a bit boring, really. Did you go to any fancy dress nights for Halloween? hope you did. And then last Saturday, Saturday last? No, the Saturday before last, I did a fireworks party. That was at a, a community centre. That was quite nice, except to say that the fireworks were all over and done within about 15 minutes, you know. And then everyone came into the hall. Lots of kids uh, running around near me, which always worries me. They're going to try and push something over or something like that. Little kids. And um, people like that. So that was quite nice. A couple of nice parties that I got. And I even got a, a sort of half, half, a half hearted firework party thrown in at all as well there, fortunately. Um, got a new job in Coventry that I'm doing now, DJing every other week from next year in Coventry, a place called Rainbows, and they have the most marvellous light system there. And it's been set up in such a way that DJs can use it. Because let me tell you, there's been many places I've gone in and they have the most amazing lighting effects on the wall and no one can use them. Like it's all set up on a computer and you start, but you, no one can work them. But this has been set up very well. So looking forward to that. Some nice people in there as well. That's uh, Rainbows in uh, Coventry. All right. Do you remember that uh, recording gadget I told you? OK, that I sent away for repair. And they sent it back telling me there was nothing wrong with it. And uh, I didn't believe them. Basically, I plug in my little sort of la lapel, you know, my my shirt collar radio, my, my shirt collar wired mic into it, and it wouldn't work. But if I put on the microphone on the top that came with the, the unit itself, it does work. But I was convinced for some reason that they couldn't fix it. So I ordered a new one. And this is about a, a third, is it, no, 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 maybe a bit, a bit. it's about half the size of the, of, of the original one. It's a little Yamaha one. Not only is it half the size, it's an eighth of the price, okay? This little new Yamaha recording gadget is, is, was about £88. And <laughs> I thought, right, well, okay, so that's it. So I've got my little collar microphone, plugs it in this. 
exactly the same problem. So there's obviously something wrong with the microphone, and I've bought this unnecessarily. Now, I could send it back, but I actually quite like this gadget because it's, you know, it's so much smaller than the other one that I'm using, so I'm going to keep it. It's also very easy to work, and you just... You, you flick this power on. Do you want to know exactly what it's called? It's called a Yamaha. You can have a look on the internet at a picture of it if you're not watching the show. A Yamaha Pocket Track. That's P-O-C-K-E-T-R-A-K. -A, a Yamaha Pocket Track C24. And it's a tiny little thing. And you simply... Um, the the, the on-off button is a bit fiddly. It's around the side here. And I can remember where it is. I can't find it. Where am I? There it is. On, on. OK, so turn it on like that. And it's got... Did you hear it beep then? Did it beep, beep. OK, so you hit the record. So that's, that's recording me now for its little thing, OK? And then you press stop. It's because it's got its own internal mics built in, but they're never as good as the one that I would clip onto my um, shirt. OK, so then you hit stop. And you can play it back straight away. Listen to this. You hit the record. So that's, that's recording me now for its little thing, OK? Get it there. And then you press stop. It's because it's got its own internal mics. Built. Yeah, and that's it. That's it. I, I think that's a wonderful little unit. I think I'm probably going to be taking this one to New York when I go there in um, uh, February. Probably. I can't find the... I, did, I, I told you the on-off button's in the... Where is it? On-off. No, there it is. Off. How do I turn it off now? Is it off? Off? No, can't turn it off now. Oh. Is, that, is it that wafer off? No. Oh. Uh, I can't turn it off now. How stupid is that? Doing something wrong here. Oh, that's it. There we are. Off. You've got to push it down and hold the button. So very pleased with that little gadget, but a little bit disappointed with myself that I couldn't work out that it was the microphone that had gone wrong and not the actual unit. So new little Yamaha unit. Wonderful little put, uh, uh, recording device. If you want to buy one, it's easy to use and you can use it. If you're a DJ, you can switch it to DJ setting so you could plug in your um, mixer into that and record your sets and all that and I believe it's like something like it's something ridiculously long the length of time that the battery will work in it and uh, and, and how much stuff it will store and all that so lovely little unit Yamaha Pocket Track C24 Alrighty, it's uh, email time, boys and girls. Hello to Ryan, DJ Ryan. How are you, sir? He says, hi, Chris. You need to remember that the majority listen to this show, not watch it. I think an hour is just right, maybe two or three times a week if you get the time. So thank you for that, Ryan. Uh, yes, because we, we went from doing an hour show to sort of two 20-minute half-hour one, didn't we? Um, so people have been writing in uh, about that. Hello to James. Who writes, hi, Chris, I found the hour show just right. I find any more than an hour a bit too much and I have to break it up. But this way, I don't mind too much. Sounds like a lot of people find it easier doing half hours. As for Suko in New York, I hope she's OK. I haven't heard from her at all since the storms. But I've been hearing on the BBC News that there's power and phone outages there because of the floods. And I'm hoping it's just that we will hear from her soon as everything is up and running again. Yes, um, I have heard from Suko, actually. She didn't do too bad out of the storms, although the internet has been down for a while. But she said very close to her house, it's like a war zone. You know, houses just gone. Trees uprooted and things like that. And uh, a, a bit of sad news is that she actually lost uh, a dear friend of hers in the storms as well. That hit Manhattan it was a couple of weeks ago now, isn't it? But it takes a very long time for these things to get going again. Uh, especially, you know, the subway. I mean, all flooded. Uh, it can't be fixed overnight or anything like that. So, yes, Suko is all right. But, um, you know, Manhattan as a whole is not all right. Not yet, anyway. James says, Katie seems to be a bit of a showbiz cat. Making all the appearances on camera, she doesn't like being left out. 
She certainly does like being left out. She's actually asleep at the moment on the carpet just outside the front door. That's her little place. So uh, thanks for that, James. Hello to Marge on the subject of the short shows. Marge sent several little messages in about this. Um, the short shows, and seemed to change her mind towards the end. Marge says, I don't like the short show. It's pointless to watch because you only announced a few things with no in-depth discussion. I love the hour because you got into subjects more deeply. <clears throat> you can still post the 24 minutes or whatever, but can you link to, like, getting the rest instead of waiting a week, Marge? And Marge again says... You, uh, uh, Marge again says here, why don't you have a link where a person can download the other 30 minutes instead of waiting till Wednesday? Just a thought. And congratulations on, the, on all, all the new babies. Well, they're not my babies, as you all know, Marge. Uh, the new babies belong to my uh, niece and her, and her husband and uh, my nephew and uh, his wife. Uh, well, you say about doing that link. Actually... I don't necessarily record the two shows the same day. Indeed, I didn't this week because I didn't have time. You know, so that's the other advantage of doing a shorter show. I have more time and it's more likely that it that it'll be there, you know, the day I say it will be there. If I'd had to do like two shows on, uh, this week, I I wouldn't have I, I would have been late for things. So um, by having two shorter shows, you can do one, well, you can do, either do them both together, which I did last week, or do them separately. Like this week, I recorded one on the Saturday and I think one on the, uh, uh, well, today, uh, it's Monday, uh, although it's Wednesday for you. So, yes, it, it is a good idea to split them up. And um, Marge also says, uh, with the long show, you say, she was saying about, you know, I, I look looked at this graph thing and we lose a lot of people after 15 minutes. Marge says, you lose the idiots. Your viewers are devoted and more important than 100 who watch about 15 minutes. Quality versus quantity. You, you could be, you, you got, you're onto a thing there, Marge. Definitely. Those people that stay with the show for more than just a few minutes are clearly, clearly much more intelligent than those that disappear after five. They definitely are, Marge, and you are clearly one of those intelligent ones, darling. She says, I posted that I like the hour, but will live with 20 or 30 minutes. So thank you for that, Marge. Marge says, the emblem on the bottom of... Uh, have I still got that photo here? One minute. Yes, I have. One minute. It's on that, it's on that thing. You remember I, 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 I told you I had a little photo of uh, baby George, my, my niece's um, baby. And... He's got this little blue thing with stars on it, little all-in-one thing. And on, at the bottom, there's a little picture of a tiger, and I couldn't remember who that was, that tiger. we just lean across there. And it's actually Tiggy. It's Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. Of course it's Tiggy from Winnie the Pooh, uh, the tiger. Uh, Marge also says, Two at 30-minute shows is great. I don't have to commit anything... I don't have anything to comment on a 20-minute talk, so so we'll watch again. So how how about we split the difference and do two thirties, two 30-minute shows? Is that is that going to make everyone happy? I think I think I think that's a good compromise, don't you? Those that want the show a bit shorter, those that want it a bit longer, we do two lots of thirty. How does that sound? Is that all right? E yes, I'm full of glee today. I know. Marge also says, and I her, here's her weekly long letter, and it says, Howdy Chris, it's Marge here. Let me start off by saying the word. Malevolent. Malevolent is an adjective. What, what is an adjective? It's been a long time since I did English lessons, dear. It means having or showing a wish to do evil to others. Oh, I hope, I have, hope I'm not mal malevolent. Ma malevolent malevolent i hope i'm not malevolent am i i don't want to do evil to others i want to bring happiness and hope into sad pathetic lives that's what i try and do here mine being the saddest and pathetic of all of them i just try to bring a little bit of happiness and smiling and perhaps a bit of thought as well i enjoyed the show again this time, instead of commenting on what you said, I will share my week with you. Yes, I like that. As well as people commenting on whatever we talk about in shows, 
I do like it when people share with me their lives, what they've been doing, what they've been up to. Maybe they've got a new job, anything like that, where they've been, what they've seen, anything unusual happen. Share your lives with me on, in, on the email, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, Marge sent this in on the 7th of November, which was last week. Today, I voted for my president, Obama, to go four more years. And of course, he's won. At the moment, I am typing this. Romney is in the lead by electoral votes. Oh, so that must, that must have been quite early on in the evening because we did watch. We did have the thing here on the BBC News Channel, BBC News 24. And uh, they did show the entire election and also on BBC One here in the UK. And uh, yes, I did notice that Romney was leading at the beginning. Um... I really do hope we don't get Romney. He is anti-gay, anti-woman, women, and wants to take funds away from our public broadcasting system, which will put Big Bird out of work. Oh, we can't have Big Bird out of work. Big Bird. Is that the one from Sesame Street? Oh, I remember that. It's been going years, that, hasn't it now? So I won't know if Obama won till Wednesday, which, of course, he has done. That's come and gone now. I have to go to the dentist soon because he left a piece of bone sticking out of my mouth, which he missed. Oh, I hate dentists, Marge. Is it very expensive? I bet it's expensive for you to go to the dentist. I hate dentists. I stopped going. I did last year. I told you about it on a previous show, didn't I? He's done two fillings over the last year and they both became really sensitive afterwards. It went on for weeks and I decided not to go to him again. So I, I don't think I'll probably go to a dentist now until something goes wrong and then I'll go to another one, you know. Um, reason I mention this, do you have free dental treatment there? No, we don't. No, we don't. We have NHS dentist, but you do have to pay unless you're on some sort of social security or I think children under the age of 16. I think they're free. I have to pay. I have to go to a low income clinic here and he is a painless dentist, but he did not even have a place to spit in. And the clinic itself is located out in the woods in a trailer house. Good God, is it really? Um, it's clean and everything, and it's ran by Native American tribes in Anandarko. Anandarko? Or I wouldn't even go there. I'll go there. If Obama wins the election, we should see more free health care, or at least more affordable health care, like they have in other places. Yes, I'm always fascinated um, to find how much you Americans play, pay for your health care. It's, it's, it's really expensive there, isn't it? We don't understand that, really. We, we have some private health care here. We have free health care. Uh, basically, if, uh, if, um, if God forbid, um, I was to have a heart attack while I'm doing the show, I could pick up a phone, call an ambulance, I would be taken to a hospital, and they'd do their best for me, and it wouldn't cost me a penny. wouldn't cost me a penny. We do have private health care as well. Uh, for example, if I needed an operation done, perhaps on my arm, right, and there was a waiting list of more than six weeks at my hospital, I could then go private and my insurance would, should cover that and various other things, all right? She says, I know I go on about the election, but I'm so anxious to not have Romney win. Well, he didn't, so... That's a good thing, I suppose. I lost all my teeth this year to a gum disease and have new dentures now. But with my bone problem, it's hard to see my dentures. Oh, oh, nasty. It's, uh, is that, can I ask you, is, is that because you didn't go to the dentist for a long time, Marge? Or what was the reason for the gum disease? Do, do you know what that was? Marge says, do you have wild animals that wander into your backyard? Um... No, only squirrels, only squirrels. There's a few foxes around here as well, but that's it. Squirrels and foxes and rabbits, but they don't wander into my backyard because I'm surrounded by a fence, so no, they can't get in. Squirrels get into the backyard, yes. She says, I rescued a possum. Oh, possum. He was hit as he was trying to cross the highway, but I think he had nine lives or something because all he got was a bloody ear. <laughs> Lucky possum. I'm not sure, however, he may be blind, but he is doing well now. And if he is blind, I won't be releasing him back into the wild. I have this 10 acres of land and I consider it an animal sanctuary. I don't allow hunting or anything on it. Oh, good on you. Good on you, Marge. I don't like hunting. 
I don't understand that really, and um, why you would want to take the life of another animal for pleasure. Now, as you know, I'm vegetarian. Um, I don't preach to people who eat meat that they shouldn't eat meat. I understand, you know, that is part of the the nature's thing that we would eat other animals, and I, I, I do understand all that. Um, and even pests, you know, to to shoot or get rid of rats and things like that. I do understand that as well if they're eating all the crops. But to actually go and shoot a beautiful animal just for the sake of it, I just don't get that. Why would you want to do something like that in the life of another animal for fun? I, 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 I will never, never understand that. She goes on to say, I also rescued a mockingbird. I named him Tweety after the cartoon character. Now, do you know what? I never even realised mockingbirds were an actual... I think it was just a saying. I did. I thought it was just a saying. I never knew a mockingbird was an actual creature. True, until you've written this. Um, called him Tweety after the cartoon character. Yeah, Tweety, the little yellow thing. He's doing well. Also, it's not legal to keep wild pets here in Oklahoma unless you have a permit. When I listen to one of your videos of you in your yard, I can hear pigeon sounds. Are they yours or just wild ones? They're wild. I've got pigeons, uh, blue tits, um, starlings I see in the garden. There's a woodpecker that I hear sometimes banging against the tree. Yeah, all out, all outside. And when you, when I do do shows in the garden, maybe won't be one for a while now until it warms up a bit. You will hear the birds, especially if I record in the morning and all the birds are out there. It's the most beautiful sound. Being able to sit in your garden and recording a show in there is just totally fantastic, Marge. I have to tell you. Marge says I have a male and female um, with a new hatchling. What you mean, uh, pigeons? Oh, pigeons. Okay. They have two eggs, but one got broken, so only one baby is left, and is pure white, a symbol of peace. Oh, little, little pigeon, little pigeon. Oh, well, I was serious about your hair and the moon. It's not a wives' tale. Yeah, she said it depends when you cut your hair, whether there's a new moon or not, to whether it grows quickly or not. I believe it has to do with the electrical energy in the hair follicle. I practice a sort of folk medicine, and my ancestors, who are Native Americans, believe there are spirits in everything, even rocks. Well enough, since you don't have an hour anymore, I best stop. I do miss the hour shows, but I have to live with it. Till next time, ta-ta. And thank you uh, for that, Marge. And Marge sends in a little picture. Now, is, is this a possum? I don't know if this is a possum, because it looks a bit like a hedgehog. But she sends in a picture of a little creature which kind of looks a little bit like a hedgehog, or or either that, or it's got wet fur. So you'll have to tell me what that is, Marge. Thank you very much, my darling. And, um, is that it today? Yes, that's it from the show today, boys and girls. Oh, that's it. Um, you remember that chap who wrote to me, Jeffrey? who says he was considering coming over here with a little film crew to do uh, to record some of the quiz night that I do. He's in um, in California, isn't he? Well, I was asking him how he did his quiz, because the way I do... I, do, I host a quiz... I host a quiz... I can't even say the word. I host a quiz every Tuesday night at the Mayflower Public House in uh, Rotherhive, south-east London, every Tuesday between 8pm and 11pm. And uh, the way I do it, I have two rounds of questions. So there's a first round, which could be, say, current affairs, things in the news. The second round will be a picture round of some sort. So you might have pictures of 10 people in disguise. You have to name who they are. The third round will be a question round, like perhaps um, could be multiple choice geography. You know, uh, in what city would you find the Tower of London? Is it London, Paris, New York or Sydney? You know, that's sort of, sort of question for... Um, uh, multiple choice, and the fourth round I do is always a music round, which could be ten pieces of music, name the art, name the artist and the title, and the clue is all the artists begin with the letter S. All right, so that's that's the way I do my quiz. And I was asking Jeffrey how he does his. Jeffrey says, "Oh, a little bit more detail about the quizzes I do. The Monday quiz is very short. He does two quizzes at the the Mayflower in." Oh, where was it now? 
It's in California. I can't remember the name of the town now. Oh, I can't remember now. Anyway, um, oh, sorry, I've, I'm, re I'm reading the wrong bit of the email here. That's it. Here we are. I do two quizzes a week at the same place, the Mayflower, Mondays and Thursdays. Mondays is a much more relaxed atmosphere, so that's probably like the one I do, but the quiz I do is very relaxed, and I try and make it fun. It's a pop culture only from 1980 forward. No buy-in? Oh, so you don't have to pay to play it. We have give cash prizes through to the top three teams, usually $30, $20 and $10. The $10 winners have the option of a pitcher of beer instead, which is valued at $18. So that's cool. The Thursday quiz is general knowledge, history, science, geography, sports, etc. Both quizzes have a visual round, although usually having to identify people or places, and both quizzes have music rounds. Now, it's interesting that you have a sports round. A while ago, I completely stopped doing sports round. I found doing sports round, the, the, the scores were always very low, and people just didn't seem to like sports round. Even, even sports people tend to like one sort of sport, you know, whether it be football or cricket or something like that. So you do two football questions and then there'd be one on boxing and one on judo and one on where was the Olympics in 1960, whatever. And I, I found the sports rounds were particularly unpopular, so I no longer do any sort of sports round. Now and again, you might get a sports question in a general knowledge quiz, but as a, as a dedicated sports round, I don't do those anymore. Um, Jeffrey says Thursday's quizzes have a three dollar buy in. All of that cash is paid out to the top four teams, usually seventy dollars, sixty dollars, fifty dollars and forty dollars. Sounds like a quite big pub because the Mayflower in Rotherhive is very small. Am I assuming that the place you do, Jeffrey, is, is, is quite large? He says, or however it works out, depending on how many people are playing, usually 70 to 90 players filling out 15 to 18 teams. Well, uh, Jeffrey, usually we have between 40 and 50 players uh, and about nine or 11 teams, somewhere between that. So that's that's usual for the Mayflower. So uh, clearly where it's a much smaller quiz than the ones you do. On Thursday, we always we also have a lucky loser. That is, we draw one answer sheet from the non-winning sheets and give that team twenty dollars. So that's cool. The idea was to keep everyone at the pub buying beer, etc., until the very end of the quiz, regardless of how well they thought they were playing. It works. Yes, I do the same. <clears throat> I do the same. I I have four rounds, and it doesn't matter how many people in there. I can stretch the quiz out, or. Or, or, or compact it down a bit and I do keep an eye on the time and the quiz never finishes before a quarter to 11 so I do exactly the same as you we also do raffles every week giving away premiums we get from our beer and spirit distributors t-shirts, hats, scarves and things like that I'm paid a flat fee for both nights by the pub as indeed I am I'm the, the, the pub pays me a fee to do the job doesn't matter whether one person plays or 200 I get the same money, that's how it works the format is mostly as it was when I took over from the previous quiz master who had been doing the quiz there for 15 years. Wow. I changed a few things over the course of seven years, but it's basically the same. I write all the questions and prepare my own music and visual clues. That was the only bit of advice the old quiz master gave me, and I think it's a wise choice. It does take a lot of my time, but I really enjoy looking things up and finding questions throughout my daily life. That's, that's fantastic. I must admit, I don't write my own quizzes. I buy them in from various different places, uh, although the music quiz I do do myself. A few years back, I was selling my questions to an outfit called Brainstormer, which provide quizzes to hundreds or so pubs across the US. The other benefit to writing my own questions is that I've researched the answers personally, so I'm able to explain myself when arguments arise, which happens all the time. I get that as well. All the time. All the time. And... They, they they sit there, and as soon as the quiz is over, they're on the mobile phones, checking up answers and all that business. It, it, it's actually quite annoying when they start doing that. It really is. Most of the time, I was right. 99.9% .9 of the time, I was right. Occasionally, there'd be a wrong answer. And I'm quite happy to hand my you know, to say, oh, yeah, OK, fair enough. And they show me they, they've got to prove it first. And then I say, fair enough. OK, you can have the point. And then, then I have to add it on. But it's a bit of a pain, to be honest. It really is. I feel a little bit 
I do feel a little bit insulted, really, when people start looking up the answers as well, checking that you're you're correct, you know. But most people, most people will say, "Oh no, no, that it can't. That's not the right answer." And then you look it up and you show them, and it is indeed the right answer. And even when it's there in black and white in front of them, they won't believe you. So you have to be pretty strong at doing a quiz. You've got to be um, confident. You can't go in and do a quiz all wishy washy. Someone was asking me the other day about my quiz and they want to start doing a quiz. I said, well, the most important thing is that you are confident on the microphone and basically don't take any crap from anyone, you know, because they will all try it on. And you've got to watch out for cheats as well. Most of the people who pay my quizzes have been doing so week after week since it started seven years ago. The Thursday crowd is pretty serious. Oh, I, don't, oh, I don't think I could do serious. The Monday crowd, not so much. Monday folks are encouraged to heckle me and they get it right back. As you said, I try and make it fun. Same as me. Same as me. I'm currently trying to cut together a little video teaser for the product, although project, although so far um, uh, that, that hasn't happened. So there we are. So thank you very much. Uh, he says also... The Monday quiz is very short, 12 questions, including music and visual. Oh, is that all? 12 questions? Wow. And it lasts 45 minutes, beginning at 8 o'clock. OK. Fair enough. Thursday quiz is 21 questions, including music, visual and a bonus question. Thursday's quiz begins at 8 o'clock and is wrapped up by 9.30. Ah, so shorter than mine, you see. I do four rounds of 10 questions each, and that lasts 8, 8.30, 9.30. It lasts two and a half hours. Two and a half hours, my quiz. So there we are. Oh, that's an inner. That's interesting. Team switch papers for grading as I read the answers. Uh, my answer sheets, they're like a carbon copy. So they write on the top sheet and it comes through the bottom. At the end of the round, they tear off the, the bottom sheet. They give that to me. Then I give the answers and they mark their own pieces of paper. Okay. Then I collect that one out as well. Quickly match it up with the one they've already given me because it only takes a, a few seconds to check that nothing's changed and then we move on to the next round. So two different ways of doing quiz and it's great to hear from you, Jeffrey. All right, that's uh, that's it then from the show today, boys and girls. Being a Wednesday, uh, you can join me tonight for karaoke. Wednesday is karaoke night at Belushi's in Borough High Street, London between 10 p.m. and 2 a.m. You will need photo ID for that particular venue. Email address, once again, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Subscribe to the show on iTunes. Just type into iTunes, United Kingdom Talk, and you can uh, download either the audio or the video version of the show. And the main website for the show, as always, is unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I'll see you for Saturday's show. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>